Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&D. In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at chapter 8 of Turton et al.'s textbook, uh, Estimating Manufacturing Costs. And what we're working on right now is understanding better the utility costs. And in particular, we're going to look at cooling water in this lesson. Now, cooling water for table 8.3 in our book is listed here and the plan is that we're going to go from 30 degrees C when it goes into the process and it's going to be returned to the cooling tower at 40 to 45 degrees C as typical. And we have the price estimates here. How did they get these price estimates? So a typical cooling water system is going to be something like this where we're going to have some water that we're going to feed into our cooling tower. And it's going to typically be sprayed so that it's going to be air cooled by a little bit of evaporative cooling. And unfortunately, because of that, you are going to have some loss, right? Some of it evaporated and went out with that air that was blowing over it. But that's going to effectively cool our system. So we're going to bring some water in, we're going to cool it with evaporative cooling, and then we're going to send it out to the process, 30 degrees C. It's going to go to the process, lots of different places. It will be returned or fresh water will be brought in. So sometimes we can just bring it back and recirculate it. Sometimes we'll need to just send it on for treatment. It depends on what our process is, or maybe we have a leak in a tube or something, so we will always need to be able to send this to waste, but likely we'll be able to return most of it to our system. But remember, we're always having some water loss, so we're going to always have to add some makeup water to this to account for our evaporative losses or just what little droplets of water get blown out, the windage loss, as they call it. Now, they do an example in the book where they look at how they estimated this price for cooling water. And I'm not going to read this to you. It's in the book. But what I want to do is just kind of talk you through it so you can pause and read along and make sense of this. So the first thing they do is they figure out how much cooling water is going to be required. So just doing a simple material balance, Q equals MC sub P delta T, solve for the mass of the cooling water. Remember our delta T is going to typically be going from 30 degrees to 40 degrees. So 10 degrees is our usual design delta T. Then they're gonna figure out how much water do you have to evaporate in order to get that much cooling? And so this is, they call it W, okay? It's also a mass, but W, so this is going to be the amount of water that's evaporated. And this is also equal to Q, but Q and the heat of vaporization, this is the water that evaporates. So Q over W, or Q over lambda, excuse me, is equal to W. And so now then they figure out what's the percentage of circulating water that they need to flow. So they're gonna take the ratio of these two water mass flow rates. Next, they're going to figure out how much water uh, is gonna be lost due to just the wind flow. And they estimate that it's gonna be about 0.1 to 0.3%. And so they're gonna to have to add makeup water for that. They do this by recognizing that another phenomenon is there's going to be some salts and so forth in this water. You're not using distilled water. In fact, you may be adding chemicals intentionally, but there are some that just nat naturally are, are going to occur if you're using, say, city water or whatever. And as you evaporate the water, you're going to have a buildup of these salts that are in the water. And so there's probably some sort of maximum that you can allow. And so they do it based on five moles of salt 
in the cooling water per mole of salt in the makeup water. Okay? And so they do this and they do a salt material balance. So that's what this is in the problem. Next, they figure out how much electricity is going to be needed because all of this pumping water around is going to require electricity. So they figure that out. And then they look at the pressure drop, okay? So the pressure drop is going to be, which is in this formula for the power, based on what's happening across your heat exchangers, your piping. You're going to have a control valve, which takes a lot of delta P. And you're going to have some static head you need to account for. And they just do this based on some typical values, okay? In other words, if you have a situation that's different than this, you could go through and redo these calculations and improve the estimate for your values. And then they also need to have the fan to blow the water across the cooling tower, okay? And they just do some simple estimates for that. Then they just estimate the costs. So we've got water, we have some chemical additives, we've got electricity, they use the tables in the book, and they add all those up and they come up with a cost of 35.4 cents per gigajoule is their $2,001 estimate of the cost of cooling water. In our next lesson, we're going to continue looking at utilities, but we're going to be looking at refrigeration. Thank you very much for your time.